Hi everyone, Craig here. And in this video, we're gonna have a walk around my own tiny tropical styled garden to see what is in bloom in June. My tiny tropical garden has grown really well this year. We had a hot, dry spring and recently heavy downpours of rain. So everything is growing quickly and well. I've tried to stick to a color palette just to make the garden a bit more cohesive this year. And I think it's working. Let's take a look. I've actually become a bit obsessed with salvias this year. Some of them look very cottage gardeny, but some like this salvia amistad have huge repeat flowering, brightly colored blooms. And this deep purple looks amazing against the lush green foliage of a tropical garden. And you don't have to deadhead it. It will flower and flower and flower all the way to the first frosts. And this is a Lampranthus. It was given to me as a cutting from a friend, just labeled Lampranthus pink. And again, it repeat flowers non-stop. And for such an understated foliage plant, the flowers are an intense color and they absolutely glow in the sun. And I love this plant because when a cloud comes over, the flowers close and they close at night and you can just watch them all open again every morning. And the color perfectly matches the tiny magenta blooms that are opening on my creeping thyme. This is a really nice scented ground cover plant. And I'm gonna spread it up, take cuttings, try and spread it around the garden because it really looks great. And it's a ground cover that blooms. <laughs> my Verbena bonariensis is looking a bit feeble this year. I love growing this plant because it's like a flag to pollinating insects. So I'm gonna be patient and see if it bulks out later in the year. And for me, this is a first. I'm trying a hardy geranium in the garden. You see, my wife loves cottagey plants and cottage style gardens. So I'm just trying to blend some of the plants that she likes into the garden, because after all, it's her garden too. And I sort of did take it over with my tropical style. But credit where credit's due. My wife encouraged me to add all of these flowering plants into the garden because I was obsessed with foliage and I think it looks all the better for it. And sticking with that purple theme, we've got this large bloomed clematis. This one's called the precedent and it was just a cheapy clematis bought from a local supermarket about three years ago. And it's good. You cut it back and it repeat flowers two or three times a year. And if you look down low, we've got this exotic Impatiens arguta which is a blue flowering in patience, just poking out from underneath the evergreen shrubs. I really am loving in patience this year and they're really easy to grow from cuttings. And I don't think you can get much more exotic looking than these blooms. Though on this plant, you really have to know what you're looking for to be able to find them. Another repeat flowering salvia I have in the garden is this magenta pink salvia amante. It's actually the red flowering form of the purple salvia amistad I've just shown you. And I love this one. I've planted it on the opposite side of the garden to the purple, so they work quite well as a pair. And the pink is picked up by this golden fuchsia, fuchsia genii, which again, fits into the color scheme, pinks and purples. And the pollinating insects love fuchsias, so they are always paying visits to this plant. I particularly like it because the golden leaves, I think, look really, really exotic and they glow when it's planted in a semi-shaded spot like this. And that golden leaf is picking up the yellow golden flecks in my farfugium planted next to it. Now in my tiny tropical garden, I try and be as organic as possible, which does mean sometimes the slugs get their way with my hosta leaves. But it's pushing out a bloom, which I think is a nice addition to that silvery blue foliage. It's this pale, pinky purple flower, which just about fits in with the color scheme. Hostas are great for shade, and another shade loving plant I have in flower at the moment is not that beautiful caladium, but this begonia, which is just tucked underneath a fern, and I think begonias and ferns make a great combination. Now, this one was mislabeled as Metallica, so if anyone recognizes what it is, let me know. And then something that just about fits in with the pinks and purples is this very blue 
Salvia Payton's Patio Deep Blue. It is intensely blue and I love it. Blue is such a rare colour in any garden and it looks great in a tropical styled garden. So on to the oranges, yellows and reds, which are all colours picked out from this Alstroemeria Indian Summers. I mean, just look how crazily exotic these blooms are. And my plant has gone nuts this year. It's got enormous and it's chucking out blooms on blooms on blooms. And the colours from the Alstroemeria are perfectly picked out by this Ebutalon Megapotanicum or the Chinese Lantern Ebutalon. I've trained mine up the stems of my roost tree and you've all seen it in the vlogs before, but it is continually flowering, continually putting more and more flowers out. And they're just delicate, dainty, hanging Chinese lanterns that just catch your eye as you're walking around the garden. And that large leafed, yellow flowering ebutalon that I grew from a cutting and planted out this year is still putting out loads of blooms. I love them. I think they look a bit like a hibiscus. They're bright yellow, so they glow in a semi-shaded or sunny spot. And you can see all of the tiny flower buds that will just keep being produced all summer long. Now on to some oranges. This is my Canary Island Fox Club. It is an amazingly architectural flower that looks a lot like our native foxgloves, but is bright orange. And I think it flowers over a much longer period. Now this grows as an evergreen shrub and I recommend you all try one. And beside that in a slightly shadier spot is my orange flowering apathians. I love this plant. And it's planted right beside the more common Congo cockatoo, which is a yellow and red flowering apathians. You have to work a bit harder to find the flowers on these because they're held underneath the leaves. Now in the winter, this is really commonly grown as a house plant and come autumn, I'll take lots of cuttings, dig up the main plant and then keep it as a house plant to grow it bigger through the winter months. And very subtly at the top of the stream, one of my succulents is putting out orange and yellow flowers, which match accidentally, of course, that wasn't planned. And I can't miss out the yellow flowers of all of the edible plants that I've mixed into the tropical garden this year. This is that tromboncino squash that will produce enormous jungly looking fruit and veg. It's scrambling up the rows and just beginning to produce some veg. But these giant leaves belong to my courgette, which has produced endless amounts of flowers and each will be followed by a courgette. And of course, because I like oddball plants, I'm growing the yellow form, which just happens to fit into the color scheme. And they actually look really, really cool with these bright yellow fruits and vegetables being produced amongst the ornamental exotic plants. And then just on the boundary of yellow is the frothy flowers of my Alcamilla mollis. Now, this is really common in cottage gardens and it self seeds everywhere, but I'm using it to soften the edges of my path and you can see it on each side of the garden path. And I think these delicate frothy flowers which are only just about yellow, but more lime green, really work well to contrast against the strong foliage that we all grow in our tropical style gardens. And in fact, I'd say the flowers of the Hushara, which I grow alongside the edges of the stream, fit into that category as well. Normally cottagey, but they look great in a tropical garden because they add contrast and a lightness to all of that bold foliage. Now this is something we've been wanting for a while. My wife has been asking for an evergreen, highly scented climber to grow up the sunny back wall of the house. So this is known as the Chinese jasmine. It has these tiny jasmine-like flowers that are really, really scented, especially in the evening. I'm gonna be swapping this out with one of the bamboos that are in a pot on the patio so that this can grow in the bamboos pot and we can train it up the wall and enjoy the fragrance of a summer's evening. Oh. And this is my Caladium Red Flash. It's been one of the last ones to grow from a tuber, but the foliage looks amazing. But that's not why I'm showing it in this video. Just behind it is what looks like a new leaf, and then this different one, which I'm sure is gonna be a flower. Now, Caladiums aren't grown for their flowers, but it's nice to see that it's happy and producing a flower. They're more grown for this stunning tropical looking foliage. And there are a few other plants that are budding up, ready to produce exotic flowers in my garden. 
So if you want to see them, hit subscribe and keep an eye out for the update video where you'll see loads more exotic blooms as the summer rolls on by. Like my Magnolia grandiflora and this Impatiens tinctoria, which will produce orchid looking large white flowers with speckles of red. And it should have a very delicate sweet scent. This is planted at the shadier end of the garden and has grown quite big for an Impatiens. And here's another one for the pollinators, Buddleia indigo buzz, with its intensely purple flowers. It's just producing buds now, and my wife loves this, and it gets me brownie points because it looks a little bit cottagey. And just behind the butylon flowers, you can see the coppery leaves of one of my gingers. That one's Hedicium greenii, which will have orange flowers. And I've got two other gingers in the garden, which will hopefully flower later in the year. And of course, my Persian silk tree, now in full leaf and budding up to flower again. This is one of the most exotic looking trees you can grow, especially when it's in full bloom. I can't wait. And we've got a few pink lily bulbs dotted around the garden. These were donated to us by a neighbour who chucked them over the fence when they came free with something she ordered. I'm really happy that I've decided to stick to a colour plan this year. It makes the garden a whole lot more relaxing to look at. The colours just guide your eye between the plants. I can't take full credit, like I say, my wife suggested I pay more attention to colour and put more flowering plants in, and she was right. My tropical garden is looking great. Now don't forget to check out the Tropical Tribe website if you're looking for more plant and garden inspiration or you're looking for places where you can buy these plants. Hit subscribe if you like this video and comment below if you've got any tips or questions. And as always, Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next videos.